This is titled, What Do You Do When You're Pulled Over by a Police Officer? I got this suggestion from Steve Markovich. I know he won't mind me mentioning his name. He's my favorite Croatian friend I like to joke about that is my fan, my fan and friend uh, with the radio. But Steve suggested I do this, and I thought it would be a good idea. First off and foremost, if you're ever pulled over by a police officer, the number one thing that you want to do is to be polite. You really do. You know, even if you've done something wrong, it's best to be polite. That matters down the road. If you're nice to the police officer, when it comes time to work out a deal, it's going to help you. So trust me. For example, I'm the bulldog, right? I sue police officer for misconduct. I am always polite to a police officer when I pull over. I practice what I preach. Also, they're going to want to see your license, your registration, and your insurance card, okay? Now, they also don't want you to get out of the car unless you tell them to get out of the car. Don't make the police officer nervous, okay? Stay in your car. If you do not have these things, but you know you have them, don't worry about it. Don't get all worked up that you don't have your registration, your, your license, uh, and your insurance. The reason why? Because you can produce those later. If he gives you a ticket that night for those, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. If he asks you to get out of the car, you can get out of the car. Now, this is something because usually when you get pulled over, you're wanting advice that, hey, am I under the influence or anything like that? One of the things that I want to stress to you that I totally disagree with, uh, Steve Adams, who's my friend, and he's, uh, we both used to be on Bill Cunningham all the time. Of course, he is still on with Bill Cunningham as, as an advisor on these. This is where I disagree with Steve Adams. If you know, and I've told my family members and friends this, this is, this is my advice to you, okay? If you refuse a breathalyzer, if you refuse a breathalyzer, in Kentucky and Ohio, there's an automatic administrative suspension of your driver's license. In other words, you're going to get your driver's license suspended, period, even if you're not convicted of a DUI. You don't want to go down that road, in my opinion. If you really have, and I'm not saying this because they, the police will tell you that they, they are trained. Most people say, I had two. I had a couple. It's weird. Why do, why do people do it? It's, it's like a reflex. Everybody says, I've had two. So when you say, I've had two, well, they know that that's what everybody says. But I'm being serious here. If you legitimately know you've only had one or two drinks, like two beers or two mixed drinks, this is my advice. Take the breathalyzer. Do all the tests. Now, there's those that say, oh, well, they're, you're giving uh, them evidence against you. No, what you're doing is, is you might be saving yourself from a DUI conviction because I'm telling you that if you only had one or two drinks, you're not going to blow a legal limit BA or it'll just be just over it and we can get those reduced. If you refuse, you're going to get your license suspended. Another tip. And people say, well, how do you know you're not thinking right when you're completely smashed drunk? But I want to tell you, if you are really, really drunk and or you've been in an accident, you've caused an accident being really drunk, do not do anything. Don't take the field sobriety tests. Do not take a breathalyzer. Don't do anything. Let them arrest you because you smell like a brewery. The reason why, because then you are giving them evidence that's going to be devastating to your case, and you're facing a more severe punishment. There are more, there's a bigger punishment for a DUI that involves an accident or a breath test that's up above a certain limit. So you don't want to give them evidence against you if you really are smashed. But this idea that you from the very get-go, refuse all of those tests, in my opinion, is foolish. I can tell you right now, I don't drink very often. But if I drink a beer and I get pulled over on the way home, I'm going to take the breath test. I'm not going to not take the breath test. I only had one beer. Um, some other things. Be polite. Do the best you can on the field sobrieties. We're trained to attack those. So if you have high heels on or you've got prescription medications or things like that, don't worry about that. We'll deal with that. The most important thing and the best advice is be polite 
and be compliant. Now, I will tell you this, and this is something that's uh, a little edgy advice. If you're being arrested, don't resist arrest. Let them handcuff you. Let them take you off and, and, and do whatever you need to do. However, I just want you to know that if there's something really bad going down, if there's something really bad going down, uh, you have to defend yourself. Now, that's going to be the rare circumstance that you've got a rogue police officer. Some more advice that I think is important. Um, usually, what's, being, what's going on, you need to know this, is probably on a video cam in the police officer's car. So remember what you say and your attitude's important because it's probably being recorded and he's going to have a microphone that you don't know or even a camera on his person that's going to be recording everything. So you need to be careful because it's all being recorded. Uh, I thought of another thing that, uh, that just escaped my mind, but I think that sums it up generally pretty much. If you're pulled over, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Uh, keep everybody quiet in the car. You know, you don't want your buddies in the car to be mouthing off to somebody. You don't want that. Um, let me see. Oh, some other ideas. I did think of them. Hey, you do not want, okay, people say, well, he didn't read me my rights. They don't have to read your rights at a roadside stop, okay? So just so you know, if you get arrested at a traffic stop, they don't have to, quote, unquote, read your rights. When they put you in the back of the car, everything you say to them, they're going to use against you, so, so don't do it. If they pick you up on a warrant or something and you're guilty, do not talk to them. I'm being serious. If you are innocent, talk all you want. If you are guilty, don't talk at all. Some more things. No, they do not have to show you the... Uh, the gun that they recorded your speeding. That's something that Steve mentioned to me. Is, is that the use? Um, excessive force, can you resist? Uh, yes, you can, excessive force. That's that rogue thing. But I don't think that that's something uh, that you should do. You are entitled, when you are in a custodial interrogation, to a lawyer. If somebody rings a doorbell and they say, hey, we want to talk to you about something. If you are guilty, if you are guilty, do not talk to them without an attorney. I'm, I'm a little untraditional as a lawyer. Some people say, oh, don't talk to a cop no matter what. No, I'm not that way. If you are innocent, talk away because you avoid maybe being arrested in the first place or charged. And the truth is a wonderful defense. The truth is a wonderful defense. Uh, polygraphs. Um, if you are really innocent, chances are you're going to pass a polygraph. I love the polygraph. Why? Because if you pass the polygraph... Guess what? They're going to let you go, probably. If you flunk the polygraph, they can't use it against you in court. So it's a win. It's only a win if you do a polygraph. So a few tips for you. You can thank Steve Markovich for giving me the idea to put this together. If you've got any questions about any of this, shoot me an email or call me, and I'll get right back to you.